guys welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another vlogmas video ever since my channel started growing a little bit i've been getting a lot of uh, questions in the comments and also a lot of people message me on linkedin and on instagram asking questions and a lot of the questions are more or less similar so i thought it would be a good idea to answer them in a video i also asked you on my community tab yesterday i said that i'm doing a q a video and some people ask questions there as well i'll probably do around 20 today because otherwise this video is going to be two hours long but if there is enough demand i can do a part two can you give me some tips on being a successful software engineer and how were you given more responsibility so early on? It's a difficult one because I've only been in the industry full time for about a year. What I would say is just focus on learning in the beginning of your career. Focus on diving deep and gaining more understanding of the things that you're seeing instead of just trying to push as much code as possible. Very cliche but ask a lot of questions. When you go into the industry you'll be in a team with people who are a lot more experienced than you and that is a golden opportunity for you to learn. If you don't understand something figure out how and why and what is it that you're not understanding and even if that takes you longer. Oftentimes when I'm doing a task I know how to do it because I've seen the pattern in different places in the code for example so I know how to do it and I know how to make it work but I don't always understand why is it that I need to do it this way for it to work? Why does it work? It's like a trade-off. You're going to be spending more time in the beginning doing a task, but long-term it's going to pay off because as you go, you're going to build proper understanding and solid foundations and then you're going to build on top. It shouldn't be like a competition where you're just trying to get as many pull requests as possible. Focus on learning and learning properly instead of just rushing through things. The second part of this question is how were you given responsibility so early on? I, I don't know 100% for sure because it wasn't exactly my decision but over the summer I took over a feature and it kind of just happened it wasn't planned but I went on a holiday at the end of May and then when I came back everyone else was working on different features and all of those other features were already like close to being complete or they had a lot of people working on them already so I was like okay what do I do so I saw this epic that was in the queue and no one was working on it yet and I was like okay maybe I can start with that and it only had one ticket um, in it and it was some, something super trivial and I was like okay I'll just start with that until I figure out what I'm doing but obviously I completed it pretty quickly I took the initiative to create more tickets for myself and to keep going and even when something was difficult for example I had to do some work in the network layer of our application and that area was uh, probably most difficult to me at the time some of my teammates were like oh you can leave that to this or that person don't worry about it and I was like no if, if that's okay I'd actually like to try it and this way I kept taking more and more of that feature until eventually I implemented most of it it ended up taking me a lot longer than it would have taken for someone of our senior developers but my manager told me that there's no rush for this to get released um, and then there was this second epic that was basically the sequel of this first one and at that point I was the person who implemented most of the first one and the person with the most context so it only made sense for me to work on the second one as well and my manager was like oh do you want to just own it I was like yes of course I will own it so the first thing is initiative and I think the second reason that's just my assumption I don't actually know if that's the case but I feel like building trust and being honest is very important when I was working on that first epic I I would always be very honest when I don't know something and I would always say oh I don't know how to do this I want to do it but it would probably take me more time than it would this or that person is that okay so I was always honest with my own abilities and how long it would take me I feel like this built this trust with my manager and maybe my entire team so I think they felt that okay she, she can handle it and if she cannot she will tell us and then we can help and it's gonna be fine I think that was part of it whether it's true I don't know <laughs> Did you get full-time positions in the companies that you interned? With JP Morgan, yes, I did. I got an offer right away after the end of my 12-month placement with them, but I rejected it because I didn't like it, basically. <laughs> it was a great learning experience, and in that sense, I enjoyed my time there, but overall, I was not very happy there. I'm not saying the entire company is bad, but I didn't have the best experience there. I, I knew very early on that I don't want to go back. With Amazon, I did not get a position, which at the time I didn't take very well, but it wasn't over bad because I entered in Edinburgh and if they were to offer me a position that would have been for Edinburgh and I didn't actually want to live in Edinburgh I wanted to move to London after I graduate so it wasn't really that big of a deal in that sense but I was disappointed because I, I really enjoyed my internship my manager at the time told me to apply right away and I started applying probably the month after my internship but I managed to get my current job before that and it was a great offer so I just took it video games or anime video games <laughs> I like video games they're very interactive I don't play a whole lot of them or at least I try not to because I can get very obsessed and I need sleep 
what are some challenges you faced as a developer I can probably do like a whole video on this so I'll try really hard not to rumble on forever but number one definitely imposter syndrome I think also a big part of that is that I'm a girl in tech there's still this whole stereotype that women shouldn't be in tech or that we're not good at it I get so many comments that are saying that I'm just a diversity hire that I can't code that women can't code that I should be having children not working that I suck <laughs> that I'm a fake developer that I shouldn't be there I know it's just haters on the internet but it gets to you I remember for example when I was at uni I would complete some coursework and I had male friends who for example didn't and they were always like so shocked that I did I don't know exactly how to put it into words but there was this attitude towards us as if we we're like not as good whenever we did something it was like surprising what ends up happening is when you're a girl in tech even if you do great at your job you still feel like you shouldn't be there and i think that that has been really difficult and it's really silly because i believe that software engineering as much as i love it is just a job any job can be done by anyone excluding if there are any disabilities that a person might have that prevent them from doing that and I don't believe that a certain job is for a certain group of people I think that's stupid unfortunately the tech industry and the tech field in general can be very toxic and some people really like to gatekeep software engineering and it's like oh it's a man's thing it's like what does it matter I don't understand why people care if someone who's doing programming is a guy or a girl like literally makes no difference to you and I don't understand this whole culture of gatekeeping it just makes it a less pleasant environment to be in sometimes and that doesn't happen to me at work that's happened more outside of work but it does affect me and the way I perceive myself sometimes this one is one of the most commonly asked questions how do I get a job in the UK how do I get a job abroad the thing is I came to study in the UK and I was already in the UK when I was looking for a job at the time the UK was also part of the European Union and I'm from Bulgaria which is also part of the European Union so for me applying for jobs was just apply online there wasn't anything special to it and I was also not actually applying abroad because I was already living here so I can't really tell you how to apply for jobs from another country I don't think there's anything different whether you're in the UK or whether you're somewhere else at this point you always just go online and apply on the careers page of that um, of that company probably when you apply from abroad there are visas involved and I know there's sponsorships of visas and things like that but again I've never had to deal with that so I don't know and I genuinely cannot answer that the best thing I can say is probably the same way everyone else you just apply online I've gotten a lot of questions along the lines of oh I'm going to go into software engineering do you have any tips for me do you have any advice for new software developers etc this is a very general question so it's difficult to answer with just one answer and also I feel like whatever I say it's gonna be super cliche but what I would say is focus on yourself and your own learning path your own journey don't compare yourself with other people too much I've always said that comparing yourself a little bit is good like for example if everyone else is getting an internship and you haven't even thought about that that's a good opportunity to maybe compare yourself to what other people are doing and be like oh maybe I should do that but overall comparing yourself is one of the worst things that you can be doing whatever you're doing in life there's always gonna be someone better so it's, it's a losing game and the other thing is you don't judge other people as harshly as you judge yourself you see someone's success and you're like oh my god I, I'm not there I'm not doing that but then that person might have failed 20 times before that which of course is normal but you're probably gonna ignore that part at the same time you're gonna focus on your failures and not really on the things that you're successful in and I feel like we just tend to do that as humans you don't get any value from it you're not objective you're probably wrong anyway so don't do it focus on yourself this next one is kind of similar to the previous one what tip would you have liked to know when you started to trust the process a bit more when I was going through my education and especially when I was applying both for internships and for my full-time job I was super scared that I wouldn't find a job before I would get a successful offer I would get a lot of rejections and I was being very hard on myself for it and especially when I didn't get that job offer from Amazon I was devastated and I, I just thought that I suck basically because I didn't get that job right away I applied for other companies and and I happened to apply for Bloomberg and I got successful and now I'm on a team that honestly I, I can't wish for anything better I know it sounds really stupid but that team is everything that I would have ever wanted for this stage in my career at least I am so so grateful that I didn't get an offer from Amazon because I genuinely wouldn't have gotten where I am now at the time I thought that's the worst thing that can happen to me and now I feel like that was such a blessing 
it. Obviously, I didn't know that at the time, but I didn't trust the process at all. I didn't have much patience and I didn't give myself a lot of grace. I was very hard on myself and I wish I didn't do that. I feel like now I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be, but I stress in myself a whole lot along the way. And for what? As long as you're doing your best and you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, that's all you can do. Go with the flow a little bit, like let things happen. Apply for jobs, apply for internships, be proactive, take initiative. Things are gonna work out. What made you decide to work where you're working now? The reason why I was uh, drawn to Bloomberg was that they're a big company and they do some really interesting things. When I went to the interview, I felt like people were genuine. I really liked everyone who interviewed me. I really liked their culture. I really liked their, their mindset. And that's the thing about interviews. It's not just about the company liking you. It's also you liking the company. And I had like a really positive experience with them, especially in the system design round. That's uh, when I was with a senior engineer. And I really, really enjoyed that interview interview to enjoy a technical interview says a lot because i don't generally enjoy those they're super stressful the guy was super nice super friendly i've applied for a lot of companies and sometimes you can definitely sense some arrogance and that's something that for me is a big turn off with bloomberg i really like what the company is doing and mostly i really enjoy the interview process this next question is really interesting. Has coding improved any of your other cognitive skills? I've never actually thought about it, but actually I think so. I feel like I've become a lot more analytical. I feel like I'm analyzing the world around me and what happens around me the same way I analyze code. I feel like I've really improved my skill to build connections in my mind and to draw parallels between things. I learn new things a lot quicker. Not just code, but like in general, I pick up things a lot faster. And I think that's because in software engineering, you're constantly learning new things. The more I do software software engineering the easier it is for me to pick up new skills and to learn new things and I think that also goes back to the fact that I'm more able to draw analogies and to make connections between things so I can build on top of things I already know what tech books are you reading these days? Long story short, I haven't been reading much. Technically, I'm still reading Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman, but I've been reading that for a long time and I haven't finished it yet, but that's only because I don't really make much time to read lately and I, I should do that. So I'm not reading anything else currently, but I just ordered this book that my manager recommended. It's called Innumeracy and it talks about our inability as humans to deal with numbers, how our minds are just not good at that. The way my manager described it sounded really interesting so I bought it right away I'm waiting for it to arrive I don't think that's considered exactly a tech book but I guess it's kind of similar but please do leave me any suggestions for good tech books are you solving lead code problems currently not really very very little time right now I'm barely surviving uh, with this whole vlogmas thing but generally over time I'd say yes I actually really enjoy lead code problems now that I'm not interviewing what languages do you use currently? I'm using C++, Swift for iOS development and Python. We are a mobile development team, but I'm on the iOS side, so I don't really do a lot of Android development. But I have added some strings in Kotlin, so I guess you could say I'm a Kotlin developer. What do you think is needed to be a software engineer? Nothing in particular, you just need to like it. You need to be interested in it. It needs to be something that excites you. As long as it's something that you find interesting, all you need to do is learn honestly one of the most common questions that I get asked is what is my salary what is the average salary of a London engineer the first question how much do I earn social media is really not the place for me to be discussing my uh, financial situation publicly so I don't think I'll ever answer this question in terms of how much software engineers earn in general that really depends and that's the reason why I can't really answer this question because it depends on your location on the company it depends on your experience it depends on the position even within the UK in case you're not aware London is a lot more expensive than any other place in the UK and that's why salaries are also a lot higher than other places for example the same company that has a branch in Glasgow in Scotland and has a branch in London for the exact same position you get less in Glasgow and you get more money in London but that doesn't mean you're gonna be more wealthy because London is just very very expensive compared to Glasgow so I can't really answer that question it really depends so the best thing you can do in what I would be doing anyway is just Google it. So if you're interested in a particular location, you can just Google average salary for entry level software engineer in this city or that city. And that's going to give you some ballpark estimation, but I haven't worked in all the places and I haven't worked in all the companies. So I can't really tell you what's the average better than what Google would tell you. That is the reason I never really answered that question. 
can you do any tutorials for the time being i'm not planning on doing any sort of technical videos first of all i literally just graduated last summer so i don't feel like i'm an expert on anything and in my opinion if i was to teach people stuff i need to be really really experienced in what i'm teaching and i'm not currently really really experienced in anything second reason is i'd like to keep my channel more of a lifestyle channel i do youtube because it's fun it's like a diary for me i like documenting my life i do work vlogs and i really love doing those but i, I also vlog other things like uh, parties or traveling i feel like it's gonna be kind of confusing if i do here's how you do merch sort and then i'm like oh here's my travel vlog from portugal it's not really what my channel is about and the last reason is youtube is literally flooded with tutorials and everything and there's some really really good ones there's some people who are brilliant and are great teachers as well because teaching and explaining is a whole separate skill that you need to develop in order to teach people how to do stuff next question is also extremely common can you refer me i literally get a request for referrals every day at this point short answer is unfortunately no i cannot and there's a few reasons for that it's not because i want to be mean but the whole point of referring is to refer people that you actually know from the employer's point of view is to find good candidates more easily if i don't know you i cannot refer you and i don't want to pretend that i know you it's also a conflict of interest because i feel like i'd be lying to my employer referring people that i don't actually know and saying oh I, I believe this or that person is good for this job I can't possibly know that the other reason is if I don't know you and I refer you that's really not fair to all the other candidates who I also don't know but they haven't asked me so it's not something that I can do for you unless I actually know you what do I need to learn in order to become a software engineer? A very broad question. It really depends on exactly what you want to do, but generally speaking, you need to learn the basics of programming and how computers work, the basics of object-oriented programming. There's a big chance you're gonna stumble across that at some point. Some basic algorithms, things like searching, sorting, graph traversals. A lot of companies are gonna ask you to do coding challenges. You need to learn how to do those. You need to know basic data structures, arrays, lists, linked lists, hash maps, sets, trees, graphs, heaps, all of those you need to have a good understanding of them. You also need uh, knowledge in databases, how back-end and front-end works in terms of like uh, network requests, responses, a very broad question with a lot of answers and also if you want to specialize in something you might need to learn um, cybersecurity or machine learning or statistics. In terms of languages I'd say Python is a very useful one to learn because it's very widely used. Java is not my favorite but it's still very widely used so it's a useful thing to know. C++ as well but there are many languages and many frameworks. Learn the basics and then you'll be able to learn new things very quickly. Can you help me with the Bloomberg interview? I can't really help you with Bloomberg specifically because again conflict of interest and also I've signed an NDA so I can't tell you exactly what I've been asked at interviews, I can't tell you what you're gonna be asked at interviews. I don't really have any Bloomberg specific advice, I'd say their interviews are pretty standard, nothing that you wouldn't really expect from your average technical interview and I've made a whole video on that. I'll make sure to link it somewhere here so you can watch it. That's literally all the advice I, I, I have. Whatever you need to do for the other companies, you need to do more or less the same for Bloomberg. Another commonly asked question is, are you single? No. Last question is work-life balance and I've just made a whole video on that so I'm not gonna go into too much detail but some people have asked if software engineers have to work 12 hours a day etc. Short answer is no you don't have to do that. You work like a normal person. There are teams and companies where the culture might be like that but if that's not something that you want you just don't go there or you just don't stay there. Like You can definitely still have a normal personal life. You just need to find the right place for you. I very rarely work overtime and I've never been asked to. It's always been because I want to. You can watch the full video on that. That brings us to the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and I hope to see you tomorrow.